Okay, I was going to set up Twitch, but still having none of it. After my trip to Berlin, which seems to have thoroughly knackered uh, a lot of the internet settings in my phone. Um, I can't get it to connect to Twitch at all. So, it's just a YouTube stream, well, not stream, video today. I'm on a bit of a mission, so it's going to be a slightly shorter ride than usual. Um, I have someone poorly who needs cough mixture. <laughs> I actually have an objective today. I'm still taking the scenic route because I suck. <laughs> so the trip to Berlin was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, where to start? So many different things that uh, I did out there. So they have e-scooters everywhere across the city. There are literally thousands, thousands and thousands. <clears throat> They've started using them occasionally sort of here and there in London, but it's, it's nothing in comparison. The traffic is so much lighter. I mean, there's, it's about a third of the population of London and the roads are wide and huge um, everything is completely different uh, compared to London so there's so much space for their cycle network and obviously the uh, scooters can use the bike lanes um, so they're, they're an extremely practical way to get around um, not necessarily the cheapest, especially at the moment. Uh, Germany is doing this fantastic offer that, uh, to help people through the cost of living crisis. That um, all all public transport travel is nine euros for a month. So for the next three months, you can travel as much as you like on public transport for just twenty-seven euros. Um, it's absolutely amazing. The one thing they don't do is uh, it doesn't include intercity travel, but all sort of local travel is included. Um, yeah, so I mean, that, that could save a lot of people a lot of money. Um, normally they have something called a welcome card, which allows you to buy several days worth of unlimited travel and yeah, to sort of in one go um, depending on how long you're going to be there and how much traveling around you're going to do and the scooters could potentially compete with the welcome card um, but they can't compete with nine euros a month <laughs> but they're a hell of a lot more fun um, you literally just find them dotted there's an app It'll have a map and it'll show you everything that's available in the area. Hey, look at these guys. They're having fun. Wow, it's really windy across here today. It's really slowing me down. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, London Marathon's been and gone, hasn't it? Or has it been shunted later in the year? There's a whole load of porter toilets over there. And a small, tiny bit of a fairground. It's not really fairground time. It's a half turn. They start the London Marathon right up here, basically. And this is the staging and the start point for the marathon. So I wonder if this is the beginning of getting ready for that. Normally it's at Easter, isn't it? But I think Covid has changed a lot of the timings. Where was I? E-scooters. So yeah, e-scooters are really, really practical. They're so much fun and they're definitely a viable alternative for getting around Berlin. Um, used, once I discovered them on the sort of, I think it was the first night, I went for a, let's give it a go. And the next thing I know is that's it, I'm just traveling everywhere by e-scooter. Um, 
I don't think I use public transport again other than to get back to the back to the airport. Uh, even going to see uh, Rammstein, um, I took uh, a scooter to see Rammstein. It, it was. They are so efficient with their uh, venues and their gigs that it's the. It was the most comfortable or easiest gig going experience I think I've ever had for a, like a large um, stadium show. Um, hello. Or are these no longer a mini roundabout? In which case she's not in the wrong. Um, conversational parkour because it's relevant. Um, so I just, the switch gear arrived to, to sort of while I was away that will allow me to hook up um, a motorbike horn into this. Um, 8 amp, 12 volt horn, that should make some noise. Um, hopefully make my presence felt around traffic. I might fit even maybe just even like a, a bell, like a little bicycle ring bell for pedestrians because I don't need to or want to scare the crap out of pedestrians. Um, I just need to make sure that cars know that I'm there. Um, so yes, uh, Rammstein e-scooter there, e-scooter home. Wow, it was amazing. It was like a 30 minute ride on a scooter to a two and a half hour incredible gig of just watching Rammstein blowing stuff up and sounding epic. And uh, the idea of just getting a scooter straight down and straight back, no messing about with public transport. The, the queues to get in were minimal. I think it took five or eight minutes to get in from presenting our tickets to getting through final security. It was all outdoors, plenty of space. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it was uh, really, really easy to do. Um, then, after the show, come out, tap the app, find a nearby scooter with enough range to get you home, and off you go. <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, then there's the Hot Rod Tour. So again, another video that's on my channel. Um, I went two and a half times and um, so I wanted so it was my birthday while I was out there and I wanted to do a hot rod tour on my birthday but the weather was looking iffy um, so I went a couple of days earlier when the weather was great and uh, basically they are go-karts they're go-karts with hot rod body shells on and no seat belt and the lack of seat belt enables them somehow to legally be able to get the the laws to consider them to be um, quad bikes and as quad bikes they're allowed to do it as go-karts they would not because I guess they come under car regulations um, and so there's you know sort of between four and half a dozen of you in what essentially are these go-karts belting around the streets of Berlin you have a guide, uh, a guide in front depending on how many the first time I went out there's a guide in front and a guide behind uh, the second time um, we literally got halfway around the block and it started to rain, so that was on my actual birthday. The forecast was supposed to be okay and it turned out not to be after all. Um, then uh, the next day uh, they said we could go back in the morning, we all went around and uh, were able to do the tour the next day and the traffic was great. We were able to get most of, almost most of the two hour tour in, um, in about an hour, we didn't manage to have a right old ride around. Um, it was a blast. Then, um, yeah, so you're just belting around the roads of, the, the roads of Berlin in basically go-karts. It's so much fun. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check out that video. Um, it's on the channel and it'll be very clearly labelled as Hot Rod Go-Karts in Berlin. Um, and I also uploaded one of the e-scooter rides, the, I think it was the ride across to the, the go-karts. Um, So that'll be up there as well, just to get an idea of what it's like riding around on a uh, riding around the streets on an e-scooter over there. Then, um, yeah, that was uh, those were the sort of main main standouts, and certainly in terms of this channel, what what got done in Berlin. Um, it was, yeah, absolute blast. I can't recommend the city highly enough. Um, 
for the first night I stayed in it's called a something along the lines if you google this you'll find it Space Pod Hotel Berlin and it's like staying in Alien um, is these sort of I guess technically it's a way of making a hostel more giving you more personal space in a hostel and so the whole place is decked out like the inside of a spaceship and you stay within these little pods um, almost like the sort of Tokyo style pods um, but with a thoroughly uh, space theme um, <laughs> it was epic it's quite cheap um, and totally worth checking out on Google the Space Pod Hotel in Berlin um, it's a great city I recommend it massively there's so much going on they do not give a fuck they know how to have a good time and there's even half an inch of uh, space free there there'll be someone playing music and dancing or at the very least exercising or training or doing something they do love to party um, it is a city that is just constantly partying um, uh, yeah young people there know how to have a good time most of the more interesting things that I found would have been in what would have been considered to be the old East Berlin. Um, and, uh, yeah, an area called Friedrichshain and uh, Warschaustrasse, um, U-Bahn, the underground station, or I think it's both an underground and an overground station. Um, beep beep! Lovely, I can do this. Can I make it round? Yes, just. Here we go. So I found that most of the really interesting stuff all tended to be around a similar area. Thank you. Um, and there was just so much going on there. Uh, a lot of creatives. Um, quite near to um, a club called Berakain, which is sort of, I don't say notorious or infamous, it's just really well known uh, with like the most brutal door policy ever. Literally if the doormen there don't like you, the look of you, they'll turn you away. It's as simple as that. Don't think twice about it, they'll just look you up and down. Oh, you can have queued for four hours, and I'm not exaggerating, four hours in the rain and they'll just look at you and go, no. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, it's a city that knows how to party. A lot of the guys from the C5 group, you may or may not be aware, there was this um, jubilee nonsense, <laughs> no, that's going to worry and wind up a lot of people, um, it's not for me, um, this uh, this last weekend, one of the other joys of being away in Berlin, and so I avoided all of that, but a lot of the guys from the C5 group were in the procession and that's awesome, I'm really pleased for them, uh, they chose to do it, I chose not to. Um, and so they were on TV and they got to, uh, got to be seen riding around the city, uh, the city streets or in part of the procession. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, yeah, they're absolutely jazzed about that and that's awesome. I'm really pleased for them. They had a really good time. Um, and it's... Uh, I won't go so far as to say it's raised the profile of the C5, but a lot of people saw them that, that day. 
and so that's a good thing I have noticed that over the last six months to a year that prices have been creeping up um, as someone who has one I'm not complaining for anyone who might want one yeah, you might want to buy them sooner rather than later especially good ones they do seem to have crept up a couple of hundred pounds and so being on being seen on TV won't have uh, done any harm as well so there is a pharmacy here on the left where I need to pull in where do I shall I stop no the pharmacy over there on the right left and right to rats I know what I'll do um, there we go. Let's stick it straight outside the front for the safety's sake. Okay, for the sake of this car that's coming up, I'm crossing it up. I need to be as considerate as I can. Will I make it? Yes, just. Hey, <laughs> right. So I'll stick this outside this place shop, so I'm not in anyone's way. And I'll be back in a minute. Oops, I forgot to start the GoPro again. So, only mission half accomplished. They didn't have what I need. Apparently there's another pharmacy over here that I've never even been aware about all the years that I've lived here. So, down here on the left somewhere, there's another pharmacy. I'm not exactly much of an, there it is, I'm not exactly much of an advert for the local area. I'm going to be in the fucking way wherever I go, I'm in the way. It smells out of the way as it gets. Right, shouldn't really be on the pavement, just need to find a way off it. There we go, there's a drop curb, I can go right off there. Sinclair C5. Hello, there it is indeed, oh, yes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> you ever seen one before? Never in person. Okay. Wasn't it, was it Richard Branson? Hello. Uh, no. Clive Sinclair. Clive Sinclair. Hello, hello. Oh. Yeah, what's that, like 1980? 84, 85, yeah. Wow. So this one. To get your hands on that. Um, let me get out of the way, bit. Um, so uh, there's a Facebook group for sort of C5 owners, and there was a guy on there that said that he had two for sale. Uh, this one that had never been used. It had been in a museum, basically been in a museum for 20 years, and then in a showroom for another 17 years. And I'm the only person who's ever used it. So I was just really lucky. When he said it was for sale, I jumped on it. I was like, yes, please, I'll have it straight away. This so I just got really lucky. C5. This was going to change back in the 80s. Yeah. The way people would travel instead of using like petrol and stuff, they would. Uh, one of the first it's, electric it's battery, vehicles. Battery, yeah, yeah. So the battery's yeah. under here. So it's one of the first well, electric you do vehicles. You pedal as well. So you just pedal to get moving. Once you're going, the motor takes over. This is very groundbreaking in its day, and it still looks really futuristic. It's kind of funky, isn't it? It's, oh, yeah, that's amazing. I remember when I was about 12 or 13, I took one look at it. I thought, I want one of those. Yeah. And they're road legal for anyone over the age of 14, and yeah, that's it. Off you what, go. You can you can ride that on the road. Yeah, yeah, completely legally. It's legally how, it counts how as how far or do you say uh, how far? fast? Um, about for, about sort of about 15 miles an hour. It's limited. Okay. That's sort of a legal. Again, it's a legal limit. You could design them to go a bit faster. Um, and what a lot of the guys do is they'll put a second battery in and wire it up for 24 volts instead of 12 volts. So it'll do about 25. Um, you wouldn't want to go much quicker than that. Going down uh, the hill in Greenwich Park, I had it up to about 35, it's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> does, it, does it shake a bit? It or? does quite a bit at that speed, and obviously with only one wheel at the front, it yeah. wouldn't take a lot for you to come a cropper at that sort of speed. Yeah, yeah. But at normal speeds, it's, it's absolutely fine. Yeah, it looks brand new, that's amazing. I got really lucky when I found it, really, yeah. really lucky. Oh, good so I ride it as much as I can, I stream my rides, usually to Twitch, but they all go on YouTube as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a small channel. Oh wow, alright, I'll, I'll 
Oh, yeah. Look that way. Yeah, nice way. It's C5 Live UK. C5 Live yeah. UK. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, thank oh, you very much. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. You. Cheers. Have a good one. Nice to meet you both. I now need to have to figure out how I'm going to get back into the traffic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go down that way and come back. Cheers. Have a good one. Lovely, thank you. Oh, nice guy. <laughs> C fires make people happy, see? Even if they're laughing at you, which is very rare. I'd say maybe one in 20 reactions of being sort of negative in some way, shape or form. We're still having a laugh. It made them happy in some way, shape, or form. That's fine by me. I see how many turns I can say some way, shape, or form in the same couple of sentences. I have no idea what time it is. I've lost all track of time today. It's a little breezy right now, but it's a lovely day. I can't remember if I was talking about anything specific before I stopped at the chemist, the first chemist. Um, Probably just uh, babbling enthusiastically about the trip to Berlin still. Um, something else out there is like a five minutes of entertainment, but it's worth every euro. Uh, it's called something like Teledisco, T E L E D I S. I think it's K O, obviously being German. Um, and it's basically an old telephone box that's been converted into a disco. <laughs> so you can just about squeeze three people in there. And there's a glitter ball, strobe lights, it's even got a, a smoke machine in there. Uh, you put your money in outside and select, it's got access to Spotify. So select your tunes from Spotify, whatever you want that you can find on there. And they'll play the song. And uh, you have this sort of personal private mini disco in a telephone box, old telephone box. It's absolutely hilarious. Again, down in Friedrichshain, near Warschau everything interesting is down there. All the creatives are down that way. just missing the traffic lights. Unfortunate timing. Look like a big smile from the police officer there. <laughs> well his lights just went on, maybe it wasn't a big smile after all. <laughs> He hasn't turned around, so I'll take that as a good sign. So being road legal, I would imagine technically I can't ride this on the pavement because it would be classified as a bicycle. So I probably shouldn't be here. Anywhere I can ride a bicycle legally. I try to be as careful as I can and considerate to uh, pedestrians. Ooh, talking to 
e scooters that goes one over there. Legally in the UK, e scooters are a bit of a grey area. Um, the police were confiscating them. Uh, during the first lockdown, they became very popular because the roads were so quiet, people were using them to get around everywhere. Then uh, the government decided they were going to crack down on them. Then everyone decided that that was a really dumb idea because they're actually really useful and quite fun. And now they're trialling renting e-scooters over here. Um, but legally, it's not a bicycle and it's a motorised vehicle. And if it's motorised, then it needs to have um, like an MOT insurance and all of that and a number plate and stuff to ride on the road. Uh, but equally, if it's motorised, it's not allowed to be on the pavements. So they're a very grey area. Um, whereas these were almost had a almost had a classification made for them in the 80s of something along the lines of pedal assisted vehicle or uh, battery electrically assisted bicycle so basically legally it, it's a bicycle Okay, this is not looking safe right now. Who's going where? afternoon. A little breezy but nice and sunny. Are they parking or allowing them to go? They're allowing them to go. Pack it up. My mission will be to fit the motorbike horn to this. Um, maybe I'll live stream it. I don't think it'll necessarily be the most fun or entertaining stream in the world. Because um, I will be fumbling my way through it somewhat, figuring it out as I go along. I've not really had to do any work on this, other than basic, <coughs> basic sort of bicycle maintenance style. Um, taking wheel bearings apart, re-greasing stuff. I did have to, when I first bought it, I took the motor apart, <coughs> completely stripped the electric motor down um, and had to re-grease all of the bearings and free up the, um, free up the electric brush, the brushes in the motor, which is an easy enough job. There's a couple of fantastic videos on YouTube um, the C5 community is small but extremely helpful. I guess it's all enthusiasts with a shared niche interest. And so there, there are some really, really good videos. And the Facebook group that I often mention, um, there's guys on there. They know everything. They know literally everything that you need to know. Um, so they're always super helpful. So this wind is really slowing me down. Lucky with the traffic, nothing coming. Hi, man. It's wind, sorry, reaching across the wind's blowing dust into my eyes. I think I should get my sunglasses on because I'm that cool. Mirrored aviators because 80s tastic. <laughs> I've always loved mirrored aviators anyway, so.
lucky with the traffic. I always seem to get really lucky with the traffic with this roundabout. Because that would be an absolute nightmare to start on a hill. So a half decent e-scooter like that would leave this for dead up a hill. It really is the biggest shortcoming. Um, the, obviously the, the one thing a lot of people point out is that the, you're not that visible. So there are safety issues that you have to be aware of. Um, that's no different to any recumbent bicycle. Um, but uh, on a practical basis, it's the going uphill factor um, where modern modern motors and modern batteries thank you um, would we'll just allow something like an e-scooter or one of those electric skateboards just to leave you for dead up a hill same with um, e-bikes so some of the guys have fitted um, hub motors, wheels with an electric motor built into it. And that would probably then require 48 volts, I think. They're usually much higher voltage. in the same bracket as a Jaguar. <laughs> Would be an extra eight. So it's really parked up down here today. Sometimes people come down here really fast. So the quicker I can get through this narrow section the better. Got nice LED lights fitted and on, always on, because that makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> but it helps, every little bit that can help me be noticed. And uh, behind my head, there's a flag that sticks up about five feet from the ground, I think it is, give or take, maybe even a bit higher. Coming to the end of the ride. I'll just find somewhere in here where I can usually park up here on the left and end the video here. So thank you for coming along with me today. Uh, if you've made it this far into the video, you're a legend. Uh, leave a message. Let's go with Teledisco, that's a good one. Let me know that you got this far in the video. And I'll be streaming again probably tomorrow if the weather's good. Oh, oh hello, thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Is it uh, electric?
It is, it's mostly electric. You, you pedal to get started okay. and then the motor takes over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, so I was ending the stream, ending the video. Um, thank you for keeping me company. Teledisco is the secret word. And I'll stream probably tomorrow, like I say. Uh, so C5 Valley. Bleah. Let's try that one again. C5 Live UK, and I'll see you around. It's because I can't even say it straight face. I know it's such a cheesy thing to say, but I can't even get the words out without my brain going, no, just don't say it, dude. <laughs> Catch you next time. Bye.